Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more of The Long Dark in our Survival School series. So before I leave the cabin here, uh, which, you know, we made our way back to it in the last episode after kind of getting turned around a little bit in the best of ways. Again, one of the things that's great about early Long Dark play, of course, I've played a lot, but uh, when you're new to The Long Dark, there's just that feeling of, oh God, where am I? Um, <laughs> especially when you're in the middle of a blizzard and it's when the game is really at its best. Um, but we found our way back here and I want to say really quickly, uh, I have a correction to make on some stuff that I said, uh, two episodes ago. I think it was two episodes ago in, in this series. Um, and this is one of the aspects of the series that you should expect. And also one of the aspects that I really appreciate is the fan interactivity, not only members of the channel community, but also the hinterland community coming in, uh, just to help share perspectives. Um, you should not, in watching this tutorial, at any point see me as the be-all, end-all, long-dark expert. I am not attempting to portray myself as such. I have never consciously attempted to portray myself as such. Obviously, as a YouTuber, you have to show some amount of knowledge of a game, uh, but at the same time, in this particular context, I want people to come in and correct me. I said that in the beginning, and this is a great example of why. I mentioned that Anything that needs to cure in the game, any pelts, any, um, oh gosh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Um, any saplings, uh, maple or birch saplings that need to cure, they all take universally five days. Uh, actually, it's not just five days across the board. Some of the bigger hides, uh, like bear hides, evidently take much longer. I don't know if this is a newer feature or, I, or if I've just forgotten or if I just never noticed. I feel like... At some point in the past, and this is something people can clarify for me if they want to, I feel like at some point in the past it was five days across the board. But those times actually are different. Supposedly the rabbit pelts might even cure faster than five days because they're so small, which would make sense. So I just wanted to make sure that everyone was on board with that, uh, given that I mentioned that a few uh, episodes ago. So if you have any more questions about that, feel free to ask me or just ask some of the people talking about it in the comments below. Again, the entire point of this series is to be interactive and to help each other. And I really appreciate everyone who has taken that on board or taken that to heart um, as much as they have. So uh, we've got 10 hours daylight left. We're not all that cold. We're pretty encumbered though. Let's take a second to look at what we're carrying and see maybe where we can get rid of some stuff. We're carrying six pieces of reclaimed wood and two pieces, two pieces of cedar firewood. I kind of want to hold on to it. We also have um, these hides, this hide and uh, these fresh guts, and that's helping also the green bird sapling. So what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to just keep the stuff that I have on me. And we're going to go back to Mystery Lake. Or, yeah, we're, we're, we are going to, we're in Mystery Lake right now. We're going to go back to the actual lake. We're going to go back to the camp office where our stuff is already curing. And we're going to go back kind of the way we came. And then I will drop off this stuff at that point. I don't want to drop this stuff sooner than that. The weather's actually not looking too great, so this could be an interesting trip back. It feels like 12 degrees. One little piece of advice I haven't shared yet. I mentioned that every... Actually, hang on, let me turn the volume up just a little bit on my end. I mentioned that every zone has its own weather patterns, right? Well, if you're kind of nervous, if you're looking at the weather pattern, maybe you've been in a zone before, maybe you haven't, maybe, you, maybe you're not quite sure what's coming next... But you have that sinking feeling of, feel oh god, I am far from shelter, and I know, and I feel like a blizzard is coming. Keep an eye on the temperature gauge. Before any blizzard, the temperature will start to drop rapidly. You will see it drop usually a degree or, de or a half degree per second. It's fast when a blizzard is imminent. Um, so it'll slowly start to drop before a blizzard and then start to plummet when a blizzard is imminent, like seconds away. So just... You know, pop up the, uh, if you're on the computer, you know, just hold down the tab key and pop up the um, display there so you can see uh, what the temperature actually is. So just a little, bit, a little bit of a tip that I haven't mentioned just yet. All right, so rather than come back exactly the way we came to this place the first time, I'm going to take the outer route here. I'm going to peek over just to see if there's any animals. There are not. I'm going to stay close to the wall. We're going to be at risk for hypothermia by, by the time we get back, especially because if I haven't mentioned this explicitly, obviously, <laughs> walking around when you're encumbered, particularly 15 pounds encumbered, uh, slows you down. <laughs> you, can't, you can't move at full speed. At a certain level of encumbrance, you actually can't sprint so at all. Cold. Yeah, we're at risk for hypothermia. Lay down for a bit. 
No, you, you really, actually, you, you don't want to lay down for a bit right now. Here's a sapling, so we're going to pay a visit to that. So this is another birch sapling. If you're curious if the saplings look any different, the birch and the maple, they do. The maple actually have a green tint to them. So from up close, even from afar to a certain extent, you can kind of tell whether you're looking at birch or maple saplings if you see that hint of green depending on the color settings of your monitor and such. There is in fact a color difference. Kind of like if you're walking through the mines, there's a slight color difference when you're picking up coal to where you can tell coal from the other rocks, which we'll get to later. Actually, no, we won't get to that later. Matter of fact, I'll go ahead and just mention that, but we aren't going to be anywhere in this series. Oh, there's some saplings over there. We're not going to be anywhere in this series where we have to worry about coal. I'm going to get the gun out just in case there's a, a wolf nearby. I think these might be maple saplings. I'm seeing... Yeah, I think these are maple. If they aren't, they are disguising themselves quite well. Oh yeah, they're maple. Awesome. That's really good, actually. We are putting ourselves in, in a great position to have some additional equipment. Now, of course, we already have a bow. Yeah, see how these are green? Thank you, game, for granting me the validation of the point that I was just making. All right, so we're going to go walk back this way so that you can see where we, uh, we're going. Notice that there is a cart in the distance. I'm going to use the rifle to zoom in a bit so you can see. So it's actually warming up. It feels like 18 degrees. That indicates to me that... A blizzard is likely not on its way in. This snow might actually be about to dissipate, which is nice. Usually when you've got heavy snow like this, uh, you should be cautious. You you should definitely... It's it, it can be a kind of a coin flip depending on the zone that you're in. But seeing this kind of snow starting to pour, especially if it comes in rapidly, you want to be on your guard. Don't just think, oh, snow, pretty, let me walk around in it and get lost. Mm, no. <laughs> Especially not on higher difficulty levels. Be cautious. Take the snow, pretty as it is, as a warning. The snow effects really are fantastic in the Long Dark, I have to say. It's one of the things I like most. Now, I can't remember if I've already been here. No, I haven't. Bandage. Water purification tablets. Very nice. And that's that. Let's take a peek over here, see if there's anything in this direction. Anything on the ground? Nope. Aha, I knew there'd be something on the ground somewhere near here. There's a backpack. That was a bit of a delayed reaction. I was looking at it and walking towards it before I said anything about it, so... <laughs> okay, all right. Feels like 19 degrees. So the fact that it's warming up means that our hypothermia risk is not going to climb quite as quickly. We're at 23% now, and I don't know if you have much of a bearing on where we are, but... And, you know, actually, no, I'm not, I'm not going to comment anymore here. I, I, was, I was about to say, I was about to give you some, some tips on, like, how to tell where we are. But that's really, again, not the point of this tutorial. If you're paying attention and you, you have a, a visual memory, then you might be able to draw more of a map of Mystery Lake in your head based on watching this series. But I want to leave as much of the exploration as possible to you in this tutorial. I think that's important. So I'm going to hold off on saying what I was about to say. And again, if you are just jumping in uh, and haven't watched the earlier episodes of this series, we are just going to be in Mystery Lake for this. I'm not going to go anywhere else um, than this zone, just because, again, there's so much to the world of the Lawn Dark, and the game is... Um... You get the maximum possible enjoyment, I think, out of the Lawn Dark when you are newest to the Lawn Dark. It's not to say that there are, there's nothing enjoyable later on, but when you know as little as possible about the maps and you're exploring them for the first time, that's that's when the magic happens. People who have been following my channel for a long time for a long time probably are starting to roll their eyes when I say that because I say it so much. 
but it's true. And there's always new people to say it to. <laughs> so, we're almost back to the safe house. We can step in and warm up for a bit. And we got nine hours of daylight left, so we can still do a little bit of exploring if the weather, in fact, does clear up. It seems... I can't tell if it's getting any better. It seems like it's the same amount of snow and fog we've been seeing for a bit. Oh, hey, there's a deer. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect timing. Getting low to the ground, so the deer is a little bit slower to detect me. If I were to keep walking right now at the point where I am, he would run off. But if I get a little bit closer, I should be able to line up a great shot. Drop him, go inside, drop some stuff, maybe come back out. I want to try and get behind this tree if I can. All right, he's coming closer to me. I'm a little bit far to take the kill shot. I can, if I'm very precise. You know what? Let's try it. Just to show you how finicky the, the Long Dark's aiming system is. I'm going to aim right there, and... Okay, never mind. Not finicky. <laughs> or I've finally just gotten some practice. Alright, so there's our deer. We can get that deerskin hide. And now we actually have enough hide to, I believe, make some of the items. So we'll do that. We're not going to make everything, because again, I don't, I, I don't want to do everything in this tutorial. I just want to get enough started, but this would be good. Ooh, 20 pounds of meat. That is a beautiful, beautiful thing. All right, so, man, that's that's a lot of meat, and I'm pretty cold already. I've got 44% hypothermia risk. Tell you what, I'm actually going to go inside and warm up a bit before I, before I harvest this corpse. This is a judgment call that you have to make based on your condition. Right now, I'm at 64% condition. Um, if I were to stay out in the cold, I could light a fire to keep warm. And that could potentially make things better. But if the weather were to get worse while I was harvesting that deer, we'd have problems. So here is the condition. Notice that this venison condition is pretty low. But the condition of the, the wolf meat that we harvested is still pretty good. I've still got a good amount of food on me. I'm going to leave this where it is and we'll come back to it when we need to. Again, we've been leaving that in the snow because it's nature's freezer, right? All right, so we've got these books here, which I don't think we've researched yet. Do I have any other books on me? Yes, I do. Research has, been, has already been completed on that one, but not on that one. So the cooking book needs to go up here. This one I'll put down here. Actually, wait, I'll keep this one on me and we can use that as kindling for a fire. We can use it right now, in fact, because I've got some, some wood on me that I need to use. So... Let's switch to... Oh, we don't have any wood matches left. Interesting. We'll need to find more. And we're playing on a difficulty level where that's relatively easy. So there we go. Let's go for a cattail head. And we will definitely light that book on fire. 75% chance of success. Three out of four. I hear happy noises. Very good. So that book is gone, relieving us of a little bit of weight. And now I'm going to pile some wood on this fire. I'm definitely going to make some tea. We're gonna, well, actually, I'm going to heat up this tea that apparently I already have on me that I didn't drink in the midst of explaining something earlier. That's fine, though, because now I can heat it up. And we're going to drink that right away to help us warm up, give us some calories, and replenish some thirst. I think, yeah, we're warming up fast, which is nice. That gives us the opportunity to go back and maybe get that um, corpse harvested before long. Let's see. In order to pass some time, I'm going to go ahead and cook these pork and meats. I still don't have a can opener, which is the most efficient way to open this stuff. And plus, it doesn't reduce the durability of a knife that you could use for other things, like skinning animals, for instance when you're using it to, uh, when you're not using it to open cans. So it was pointed out to me in a comment um, that maybe one thing I have not been very, very specific about, and it's worth being specific about it, is when you are eating items, you definitely do want to make sure that, for instance, this still chocolate bar is at 38% condition. You shouldn't, as a rule, always eat the item with the lowest condition. You should just kind of have that in mind. Like, if there's an item that's about to dip below 30, 
maybe go ahead and eat that. Because once it's below 30, especially below 20, it's going to be in worse condition. We're not going to eat this MRE. It's, it's not, well, I say it's going to be in worse condition. Of course, it's going to be in worse condition, but you also have a higher risk of food poisoning. So you just want to be careful about that. So let's go ahead and step outside. I might, if it's not any warmer, I might go ahead and try and... It actually is warmer. Perfect. Plus, we have that warmth bonus from the drink. So I think we should be good to harvest this corpse. Now, one thing you're going to notice in just a second... the rifle out just in case we have any visitors nope so here's one thing you're going to notice first of all it's 17 percent frozen but check this out if i switch to the knife harvesting this full corpse and all its meat actually takes a good amount of time i'm going to go ahead and do it because i know we're plenty warm it's actually warming up right now we're above freezing at the moment okay that's everything as you can see, we're a plenty way down. Five hours daylight left. This is actually a pretty good day as far as the Lawn Dark is concerned. This is genuinely mild weather. That snowstorm didn't turn into anything. It's warmed up. It feels like 39 degrees. Feels like a lot of gear. Of course it does. You're carrying 20 pounds of meat. But think about how much food we have now. And we're going to leave it in nature's freezer. In other words, we're going to leave it with the rest of our stuff here. I'll stand in a slightly different spot so that I can tell where the freshest meat is. And then we're going to go inside and drop those hides, which I forgot to do a moment ago. So happy that I was warmed up and ready to skin that deer. All right, so... I'm going to line these up with the other hide. And then, of course, I have some saplings as well. I'm going to put them over here. Drop the birch saplings and the maple saplings. Now, what else am I carrying that is heavy? Because I'm still weighed down, believe it or not. I'm carrying sticks, a, a fair number of sticks. I'm carrying some wood on me, so I can go ahead and drop that. I'm going to go upstairs and drop it where I put my firewood earlier. There's our jerry can. Now we had firewood over here earlier, I believe. So just for consistency's sake. I'll pull that firewood down right there. We also have a good number of tinder plugs. Let's go ahead and drop 10 of those because that weight adds up. Even the extra matches we can probably drop. I'll tell you what, I'm going to drop... I'll put the matches in this cupboard. It's going to take a second to load. We've already got several matches in this cupboard. Forgot about that. All right, let's put those down there. And, ooh, we have an extra magnifying glass. That's good to know. I'm going to put one emergency stem away. We have these mittens that we're not using, but I kind of want to keep them. So we'll put them away for now. And then we do have an extra rifle cleaning kit. We'll put that away. Again, all these things add up, so you have to think in terms of every little bit that you can get rid of. And we'll get rid of the scrap metal as well because it's metal and it's heavy. See, we, we're, since we have so much clothing, I mean, our clothing is actually, ooh, our clo clothing is very wet at the moment because we're out in that fog in that snow. So we need to actually, we need to light a fire. Tell you what, let's pick this wood back up and make good use of it. We need to have this place be nice and warm. Alright, let's use a cattail head, and we're going to start with a stick. I am going to go ahead and use some lamp oil. 95% chance. Turned out pretty well. Nice and quick. Now let's let's get this fire going. Nice! 
Didn't see that coming. Fire starting level two. So let's take a look at what that now gives us. Open up the journal. Level two, 55% base chance to start fires and fires last 10% longer at level two. So there's our first skill level up from the series. Not bad at all. So I'm pretty thirsty. Well, tell you what, before... Speaking of thirst, let's go ahead and get some additional water out of this. We're going to do 0.6 gallons, which is, of course, going to be heavy. I wonder if I can drop any of this so I can either boil the water or purify it with the tablets that I've got. In general, you should, by the way, just a little small tip, you should purify the water. Here, let's go ahead and use these just for tutorial's sake. You should purify the water using the inventory interface if you're going to use these because it's faster this way. When you do it on the, the cooking Close interface that we were looking at a moment ago, see that just purified a good amount. Did it purify everything? No, it didn't purify everything. We still need, still have more. So let's go ahead and keep using these because this these are heavy too. So this will get rid of some weight. But yeah, it takes a longer amount of time. There we go. I think that's all of it. Yeah, that's it. So let's drink. But yeah, it, it takes longer when you use the cooking interface, so just be aware of that. It's something they'll probably fix in the future, but for now, if you want to save yourself a little bit of time, use the inventory interface to do the purification. And credit where credit is due, that credit where credit is due, that is yet another thing that I've learned from my commenters in the past. Not on this series, but in past Long Dark content. Alright, so. I pretty much have dropped everything that I can for now. There's a few more things I could get rid of, technically. Um, the water is really what's what's getting me at the moment, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead... Actually, you know what? Hang on. How's my calorie store? 20, it's 12.04. Let me go ahead and eat this peanut butter, because that's a pound right there that I can get rid of. And now we're going to rest seven hours. Again, the longer you rest, the more, the faster you'll regain condition, especially if you drink tea beforehand. So be aware of that. Right, let's go ahead and drink. This will definitely help reduce our burden by morning. By the way, this is actually something I haven't pointed out yet. Every single time you hit drink on the water, you will drink water until you are full. It's not like the other items where you know, you drink until the item is exhausted. Well, I mean, you are drinking until the item is exhausted, but more than, more often than not, it's the other way around with water. So in case you're curious, it doesn't have a set amount. You will drink water until your thirst is sated. So just, I think that's probably something that's intuitive to most folks, but just for anyone who's curious, um, that is in fact how that works. Let's go ahead and pass the time for three hours. It is dark, so I, I'm not going to read while I'm in here. But if we ever pass the time during the daylight, obviously we'll be doing some reading. If for no other reason than my commenters will yell at me if I don't. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and sleep for four hours here. We're at 100% condition again, which is nice. Also, the resting will give us better condition. And it's daylight. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and drink. And this should bring us below our weight threshold. We'll no longer be encumbered. There it goes. We're just below the threshold, but we're okay. So we're pretty hungry. Tell you what, let's go ahead. How, how hungry are we? Not quite hungry enough to eat that MRE for all it's worth. But I do want to get rid of some other items here. Now what I'd like to do before we go anywhere else is I'm going to go downstairs. And we're going to read these books. Or at least one of them. Let's read Field Dressing Your Kill. All right. Ooh, a 10 hour book. Holy crap. All right. Well, in that case, let's go ahead and do five hours on it. Weather's not great anyway, so this is a good way to pass the time. Five of 10 hours done. Now we should be in a better position to. Yeah, this is going to lower our weight threshold again because we're drinking our water that we just melted. Or rather, we melted the snow to get the water. And here's a blizzard. So this is perfect. We, we picked the right day to stay in and do some reading. So let's do a little bit more, shall we? And done. Now we should. There it is. 
So now let's have a look at... I'm hitting the K button for some reason. Carcass harvesting, level 2 skill. Duration, oh, okay. <laughs> well, this game's still still in early access, so this sh should show a percentage reduction in meat harvesting times. So I'm not sure exactly what it is, but we do we are going to harvest meat faster now because we are a level 2. So that's nice, right? So I do need a little bit more food. How are we doing on harvesting? So this is, these guts are, the original guts are 79% cured. All right, so it seems like the guts, the original guts that I dropped and the original deer hide that I put down are curing at a five day pace. So let's actually have a look. Can be used for crafting and repair after air drying indoors for seven days. So there you go. Wolf, pel wolf pelts, excuse me, are a seven day this is five day. It tells you right in the description of the item. Five days. There we go. So no comments needed. You can just look at the actual item. It'll tell you how long it'll take to cure. Let's see if saplings are any different. Four days. Ha! Huh. Six days for maple saplings. Good to know. All right. So we all learned something today, didn't we? I'm going to go ahead and cut this episode here. In the next one, we will focus on, again, like we were going to in this episode, but we just got sidetracked by research and talking about various small aspects of the game uh we will be heading across to the other side of mystery lake to explore what the opposite side of the zone has in store for us thanks very much for watching if you enjoyed this one don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along new science fiction si simulation god this is the one this is the outro that i always trip on new science fiction simulation and or survival content airs every single day at 6 p.m eastern time on my channel comments are always welcome let me know what you think and i'll see you next time